Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Carter Hour. Well, as I've been anticipating for a very long time, um, I have a new toy, and I'm actually going. I'm actually putting in a real server rack, real. It's here. So let me give you a backstory on this. Uh, searched the Craigslist because they didn't want to spend a lot of money on it, and uh, ended up finding this guy for uh, like it was like two eighty five shipped. Whoops, two eighty five shipped. So like the guy brought it here and everything. It was local. Um, you know, it was like uh, probably about fifty miles away, but he brought it here, and it is a complete rack, complete. Everything is beautiful in it. I mean, it's got scuffs here and there, but you know what? This thing is a solid piece of steel. It's not like the newer racks nowadays that are made, you know, exclusively out of aluminum. This is made out of steel, and it weighs a ton, and it was hard to get down in the basement, but it wasn't as bad after I stripped it down. I stripped everything out of it, but I got a lot of bonus features in this thing as well. Uh, with this power strip see this power strip it's like a hundred dollar item right here and uh, this came with it with a big uh, a big solid uh, god that's got to be 10 gauge wire and uh, what I ended up doing was because it had a twist lock plug and I, my APC doesn't have the twist lock I ended up replacing the plug with just a regular 15 amp plug because I'm not going to run a lot on this so I'm not really worried about drawing a huge amount of amperage through this cable but uh, the reason I had the twist lock on there is because usually people hook a bunch of servers to these and and it really draws out a lot of amp so this rack is a compact all right and this is a 1999 rack and I you know I, I'm digging the vintage I really am because this reminds me of back in my days of high school where um, you know that's what we had in school we had compact uh, servers and compact computers and compact racks and it's just cool just real 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 cool but anyway so I've been I cleaned this up it came from another came from a company that was pretty dusty so I cleaned it up um, brought it downstairs in the basement Put everything or I'm starting to put everything back together, but I want to show you guys this thing You know, it's it's empty right now, and it's stripped down And I'll show you guys um, All the other pieces that go along, but what was really cool was I got like six pairs of racks uh, For servers that I don't need so I'm gonna put those guys up on eBay And I know anywhere from like 30 bucks to 70 dollars depending on what the demand is for those racks I'm probably already gonna make money off this rack. So down here, I have some shelves, um, and I actually needed three shelves. So that was a bonus. And anybody that knows about server racks knows that the components can get quite expensive. And these are also steel racks, so I'll be able to put the Synology on here, and uh, you know the cable modem and the uh, Uverse modem as well. And then over here, we have the rear door, which is a mesh door, okay? And then behind it is the actual side. So it's got removable sides, removable doors. And then over here, this is the other side. And then from here, there it is, compact. It's the old tinted glass. It's pretty cool. Um, I dig it. It's, it's vintage, but it's pretty cool. So tonight, I am going to transfer all of the equipment over here. Now, since you guys saw my last video, I only had one of these right here. One VMware machine. Now I have two running vCenter between them all with non-shared storage. Okay. So what that means is I can still transfer machines between them both. I just have to power them down and then I do a transfer. It's pretty quick. Uh, works pretty well. Um, I had to make some changes on the switches. I'm doing a lot more VLANing now than I was before. 
So all these color-coded wires all mean something. This means uh, this is actually going to my new unit. Uh, one is for the server LAN, one is for the backup LAN, um, you know, and then same with up here in the uh, yellow wires too, but you know, I got the Synology over there. And yes, I am well aware of the CPU bug that's supposed to brick your Synology, but so far we're so, so far we're good, so not too worried about it. And then I got the good old firewall that you guys saw me build, and then I have, um, I have my cable modem, but I also have AT&T U-verse, okay? And the reason I have both now was they had screwed up, the cable company had screwed up on my, uh, my uh, cable internet and caused me a bunch of issues, so I immediately had AT&T come out and install this. So now I have two connections, uh, the firewall is configured to fail over, if this one quits, it goes over to this one and it works really well. But it's not, you know, this connection is just not sitting here and not doing anything. This connection is actually active all the time. It's just doing other things. Um, well, this one, you know, provides the main internet access and everything. So, yep, got the Cisco 200G uh, uh, 26 port. PoE and uh, or PoE right here and, and non PoE, um, and I've also added some new wireless devices too, uh, which I'll show you in a little bit. Um, I've got I've actually got one on the other side here, um, but I've got three of them, and uh, I actually fell in love with these things. They're they're great, and I you guys probably can guess what I'm what I'm talking about on the, the Wi-Fi, and then uh, this is new. I know you guys remember I did fiber a long, long time ago. Well, I still have a fiber connection to my main computer upstairs. And I, I've i already ran this. I didn't want to have to run another Ethernet. So what I did was I got a, a Jibic, or a Jibic, and uh, I got this converter dongle here. And I know it looks kind of a little, little dirty, but it works. Um, so that converts it from the mini um, SX to the large SX and it works very well um, very happy I got that mini uh, jib I call it a jibic but it's jibic um, I got this for $15 new on eBay so I always look for the deals I don't I try to spend as less as possible on here because I know I'm gonna get the same result as spending say $100 on something like that. I know I'm going to get the same result. So I got that brand new as, uh, you know, uh, NOS, new old stock, and uh, works very well. I picked up this this dongle right here. This this converter actually cost more than that Jibic did, which is, you know, not well. Then, uh, so, built a new machine, and I'll give you guys kind of a sideline of it. I can focus in here, sorry. You see my my bundles of wire back there. Oh, there I am, bundles of wire back there. But, um, so I upgraded the Xeon processor in here from a E3-1220 version three to a E3-1246 uh, version three, which gave me hyper-threading. I didn't have that before um, because I had to do it in a budget. So I finally upgraded the processor in this. So it's got a, it's got a E3, uh, 1246 version three, uh, with 32 gigs of RAM. Um, so I was running this, and I was running a lot of machines on it. And it was just, it was getting to the point where it was just too much for it. So I decided to build this new. Um, if I can focus, focus, focus. Okay. So I decided to build a new machine, just like it. Except this one's a little different. Um, this one's got the E3 1245 version five. And see the limitation on the version three is 32 gigs. The limitation on the version five, which is a, a LGA 1151 socket versus 1150, is that this will accept 64 gigs of RAM. That maxes it out. And that's exactly what I have in here, 64 gigs of RAM. So, um, 
I ha I'm running more of my virtual machines over here now because I have more RAM uh, to deal with than over here. I'm just running uh, the backup and email and everything over here, and then I've got the rest in a domain control over here. Then I got another domain controller over here. So we keep you know keep them on both separate machines. Uh, what's cool about this is, yeah, it's got 64 gigs of RAM. It's more than the machine I have upstairs. Um, so I'll come around here. And what's really cool, which I didn't plan this, but you see the memory actually gives you a little light show. And this is the Corsair LED. Uh, I believe it's 2666, um, but it's clocked down to uh, 2133 because it's an Intel Xeon. Uh, and this is a works Asus workstation motherboard, which I was going to go with a super micro, but I got this combo cheaper than I could get on new egg. But it's really cool. I mean, I didn't plan this either. This was the cheapest 64 gigs of RAM I could buy, and it wasn't cheap. Um, then I've got, what do we got? A network card. We've got, sorry about this, this old ass drywall in the way. Um, we got a uh, Intel uh, one port Ethernet, uh, gig gigabit Ethernet. Then now from there we've got uh, the Mega Raid uh, 9260i 8i, which means it's got eight ports. Then down from there we have uh, an HP. Um, yeah, that's an HP um, two port card which came out of my firewall because I had to swap it for a four port. And then below that is actually another HP uh, four port network card, four port gigabit network card. And then below that is the video card for, um, I didn't need anything spectacular or anything. Just, just didn't come with video on board, which I was kind of disappointed because my Intel Xeon chips actually got the GPU built in. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. And uh, so, um, as I progress through this, I will record it and then uh, put this on the old YouTubes and we'll go from there. Also, it's really cool with this motherboard, as you can see, this little flashy light. It actually goes down the strip of the expansion cards. So, that's another pretty cool light show, too. But, unfortunately, this is going to be all covered up eventually when uh, I get it in the rack over there. So, alrighty, we'll continue from here in a little bit. So we're closing in on the uh, three o'clock hour, and uh, we've gotten all the wires run, got all the uh, servers in there. This is tipping over a bit, but that's easily fixable. But uh, I'm running my VLANs right now, and uh, it's uh, still looking a little bit of a mess, but uh, getting her cleaned up as we go. That's what it looks like in the back so far. So, um, just doing a little update here. Uh, the shelf is uh, looking pretty bare over there. So, all right, I'll check in with you guys here in a little bit. Well, after working on this until about five o'clock this morning, and uh, then getting about five hours of sleep and came back to it. Uh, this is the final product uh, The door does not close Unfortunately right now because of my bundles of cable which that will be fixed It's just up there temporarily until I can get some cable management going on but Let me open this So here's the switches the firewall the Synology the uh, two modems uh, that's one of my ESXi servers, and there's my other one. And I've had some people ask me why I'm not using rack mount servers and why I decided to build my own uh, servers. And the reason is, is because I've had rack mount servers before, which it's kind of funny I've had them, and I never had a rack, and now I have a rack with no rack mount servers. Uh, the reason why I run these is because I run these 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And with rack mount servers, they're really expensive to run. And uh, that's why I decided to build my own servers because 
of the fact that these run 24/7. I went ahead and put in uh, gold 80% uh, or uh, 80 gold uh, power supplies, and they're really, really energy efficient. So, um, with the amount of equipment I'm running here, one of my servers used up, you know, like 40% of my APC uh, capacity. And right now, since I added the first server, or I added the second server, I've actually got a light lighting up here now. I didn't before uh, because I was using like 16.5% of the capacity of the APC. Now I'm using 21%, which is still not bad. Um, so um, I still got a little, little bit of work left on this, but this is pretty much the final product. Um, this is where everything is going to be and it's going to stay. Uh, eventually, I'm either going to get an, I'm going to get a rollout KVM uh, so that I can monitor the firewall and then and be able to uh, work on the two ESXi servers. But right now, um, I just left some space here in case I want to either get a rack mount KVM or get a rack mount KVM and a rack mount Synology uh, because I'm going to be adding another Synology here eventually. Uh, not right away, but eventually. And uh, I finally, it's finally nice to actually have a rack because I've had a lot of rack mounted stuff, including that, uh, that APC down there, uh, battery backup which is about, oh, it was made in 2002, but it's got brand new batteries in it, runs really well. Uh, runs this rack for about 30 minutes uh, as is, and uh, it just operates very well. So, got the switches up there. Uh, I finally got a, uh, a mini Jibic, or I call them Jibics, but they're Jibics, um, with a converter there, and uh, so it makes it a little bit nicer and cleaner installation for fiber. Um, I'll take you around the back. And uh, in here, it's got a mesh door, which I really like. I got my, uh, I got my monitor up there. Um, got the uh, computers in the back here, or the servers. And then, down below runs out the uh, power so it's very clean very clean installation but I really like it um, all the cable comes in from you know from up up above and down into here but um, I'll probably end up buying a patch panel online and installing the patch panel up there and then uh, getting uh, a bunch of patch cables and bringing them down into here so I don't have kind of a mess like that because these wires have been here for a long time some of them are shorter than others and it just doesn't make it's just not good it's just not a it's not good practice it's not it's just not good so um, I will uh, eventually get a patch panel and cable management probably very soon and, and finish this project up so that I can actually close the door see right now I can't I can't close the door because it's just too much cable up there but uh, other than that I'm really happy how it turned out I didn't get a power strip in there that I was showing earlier in the video that's working real well uh, it's kind of nice because uh, without that I don't think I would have been able to reach a lot of the cords that I had and uh, that was a nice uh, little bonus that came along with the uh, racks but uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you guys. I figured I'd uh, show you my little data center now. Uh, it's actually it's actually legit. Uh, not sitting on a shelf anymore. I got rid of that shelf. It's falling apart. I was worried it was actually going to tip over on somebody eventually, and so I wanted to remedy that. And I love this. Uh, I love this vintage uh, compact rack. I mean, it's beautiful. I love it. So. Anyways, um, again, thanks for uh, joining another edition of the Carter Hour. Uh, appreciate you guys sticking around, and I know I haven't been doing a lot of videos lately. I've just been kind of really busy and uh, doing fun projects and things, and I wish I could have showed you guys the process I went through to, to get this done, but 
I just don't have a GoPro or anything that I can really attach to me to kind of you know be hands-free while I'm doing things so eventually that is on the list uh, to get to start doing more YouTube videos but for now um, you know I'm just gonna try to do as many videos as I can uh, within the time I've got so all right anyways guys I hope you're having a good night um, and we'll talk with you soon all right for another edition of the Carter Hour take care